in worship this morning. Good morning. you all, but I just danced all week. It was just such a fun, uplifting service last week, and so I hope it's meaningful to you as well. Um, welcome to anyone who's visiting today, and I invite us to stand and begin worship with praise. Spirit, 
By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you open the floodgates of your reconciling love, bringing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you, through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah.
Allow this story to spark something new in us. Allow this story of grace to give us pause and pull us in. We are listening. Amen. You may be seated. I invite our children to come up this morning for our children.
She's like, no, but there was a dog that came and photobombed the video right as she was doing the flip, so nobody could see her do the flip. I said, well, did she still do the flip? Well, nobody saw it. Did she, flip, did she do the flip or did she not do the flip? What do you believe? I believe, yes. Right? But she still did the flip, right? Because you know, you feel it. And just like that, can you feel Jesus? Do you know I can't see him? Yeah? That's right. See your heart? And do you see him around you? Even though he's not actually here? Do you see him? Yeah. In the trees? The mountains are in the sky? Maybe when you're playing Roblox, you see him there somewhere in the virtual world? He's there. He's everywhere. Yes. The other question? Yes. Is Jesus there with the robbers? Yes. He's everywhere, right? For that, we can celebrate, right? We can say an hallelujah, maybe. Hallelujah. Oh, you guys can do better than that. Come on, you did great. Last you guys up to got almost to what? Longmower or what was it? Uh, ten, ten engine? How about a quick hallelujah? One, two, three. Awesome. All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we do not need to see the wounds in your hands to believe that you are the risen God. We see you all around us. We see you all around us. And we feel you inside our hearts. And we feel you inside our hearts. And they all said, Amen. 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 Alright, thank you so much. You guys were a great audience. of the Lord Jesus, and with great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you are able to prepare our eyes and our hearts. St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, 
Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. For if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, You know, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in, my, in his hand on the side, I, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Receive, reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have, not, because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these have been written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. Now, at the first service, I've got to tell you, I thought the preacher was okay. <laughs> um, but I've kind of been moved by the Holy Spirit to change things up a little bit. There's a few things out of here that I, I want to, I do want to carry forth. Now, everybody on this day is usually expecting the doubting Thomas. Let's just put it straight. We're all doubting Thomas. We all have moments that we were reading earlier in our responses that sometimes we doubt. You know, so we don't want to, we can't just lay this all on Thomas. It's a human condition. All right? So that's all you're going to get on doubting Thomas today. What I really thought gave yeah, my heart was the understanding of receiving of the Holy Spirit. And what did Jesus call the Holy Spirit earlier in John's Gospel? Anybody recall? Receive the Holy Spirit. Remember in that time leading up to the crucifixion when Jesus told them about the Holy Spirit. He called it the Spirit of Truth. The Spirit of Truth which will lead us all into the truth. That's in chapter 16 of John's Gospel. Jesus talks in quite some depth about the Holy Spirit throughout three whole chapters of John's Gospel, 14 through 16. Now, Jesus is a, kind of putting in front of us, and that's another point I want to make. If we read this as this is about something that happened 2,024 years ago, it's just a history book. But if we read this and take it to heart that it's also a lesson for us, and we accept the challenges, then we have what I think God intends for God's book. And it's kind of a challenge. Jesus, this is a challenge of saying, the Father has sent me, so now I send you, as he gave him the Holy Spirit. Bearing the wounds I suffered for you, but with the words of peace between us. So what did he say as he entered the room? Now, in Jesus' time, the Shalom Alakim really had a meaning, yes, it is peace be with you, but it's really more than just that. It's, there's peace between you and me now. Let there be peace between you and me. And it's carried forth yet, we will do it in our service today, won't we? Peace between you and me. Instead of all the pain that comes to us from not, and that's the other part of this text that I wanted to get to, is when Jesus issues to them this challenge, it's, it's, uh, it's about forgiveness of sin. We talked in there about how you receive the Holy Spirit. 
if you forgive the sins of any, you're forgiven. They are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. <clears throat> In my daughter's bathrooms, the bathroom of my two girls, all the time they were growing up, I had a little plaque. Forgive everyone everything. Forgive everyone everything. And they started to grow older. They asked some questions. Well, how do you do that, man? Well, I think it's Jesus' command here in this text. Forgiveness of sin. In the Bible study today, there was a great discussion. If you haven't had a chance to go to that thing, I'd recommend it. It's pretty, pretty deep. I thought I was back in class. <laughs> um, and the whole understanding of why Jesus had to die on the cross. So it's really good Easter kind of stuff. But in talking with my daughters and thinking about this forgiveness thing, I used to say to them, if God could have found a better way to bring about relationship, to bring about forgiveness, to bring connectedness to God's self, a better way than forgiveness, God would have thought of it. But what did God come up with? Forgiveness of sin, the death and resurrection on the cross. All right? So we have to, we're charged in this text, and I think in our Christian understanding, to go to forgiveness. You say, well, that's pretty hard to do, Pastor. There's some people out there I just assume not forgive. I mean, there's people voting. No, there ain't no way they should be voting for this person. That person. I don't care what side you're on. Aren't we entrenched? And he says in there, if you forgive the sins of any, they're forgiven. If you retain them, they're retained. I have spent 30 years as a parish pastor. In those years, some of the most difficult one-on-one -on -one conversations I had is when people came to think that God couldn't forgive them for what they had done. I mean, my very first day of the first day of my call in Chassel, Michigan, way, <clears throat> way up in the UP there, eh? <laughs> we had nine months of winter and three months of poor sledding, eh? <laughs> A gentleman killed his wife, member of the congregation. Off I go to the jail he wants to talk to me. And as a person of the church, now it doesn't mean he won't have to pay for his crime, you know, he was convicted and I'm sure he died in prison. I don't know. It's been <laughs> 30 years ago. <clears throat> More than that. And, uh, but I had to offer him forgiveness. Now you think, well, that's your job. Well, let's think of a few years back, and I hate to bring this up because there's way too many of them, but anybody remember the slaughtering of the innocents at an Amish school where I think it was eight children were killed while they were in the beautiful little community setting where they thought they'd be safe. <clears throat> By the end of the day, the parents of those who were killed found their way to the wife of the assailant and forgave him. Why? How could they do that? Because not to do it would have weighed on them too heavily. To not love. It's almost like it's impossible not to love. Two years ago, my beautiful daughter Lauren, other my two grandsons, killed herself. It's the hardest pill I've ever had to swallow. Because of it, I retired early. But in my journey of continuing to preach the gospel and share the faith, I remembered that thing on her wall. It's impossible for me not to forgive her for that act. Because the love is too deep. The love is so real. That's Jesus for us. The love is so deep. Connection so desired. It's impossible not to love. 
So the next time we get to thinking, I'm just going to shut that person out of my life. Who are we hurting? And that's one of those places where we could do like a little bracelet that used to be around. Mm -hmm. What would Jesus do? It's more like, what has Jesus done? What has Jesus done that we should do? Peace be with you. That's the mode of operation that Jesus desires for us. That's the Easter message. That's why Christ is risen. Okay, like the kids up here, you can be better than that. Christ is risen.
We can believe that he has mercy on us because we believe. We share in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O oh God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us, your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed and that we witness to your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Nurture trees and crops, wild flowers and all growing things. Guide farmers and gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants to life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Guide police and firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of our communities and to the dignity of every person so that no one need to live in fear. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Hear your people cry out for justice, for an end to racism and other oppression, for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your congregations cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Renew pastors and deacons, musicians, other staff, administrators, and volunteer, volunteers who help facilitate Holy Week and Easter worship. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your people cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Today we bring to you Joan, battling cancer, George and Laurel, and all caregivers, Annie and Daniel, Dale and Ann for improved health, Terry enrolled in hospice, for Sharon for successful chemo and cure, for Jim and Donna and Carol and Barry, for the elderly, that they find connectedness to you and to others. For Nicole, looking for a new job, and for all who are unemployed or underemployed. God of grace, hear our prayer. Accept our gratitude, O God, for the lives of those who now rest in you. Grant us in your peace among our fears. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Now, as was shared with, by Jesus with his disciples in that room, peace be with you. And also with you. Can we share that peace with one another?
In response to the peace that he brings us, we receive this morning's offering. Therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord. And unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, and to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered together. As one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. These are the gifts of God for the children of God. Come. All is ready. All are ready.
do not be afraid. You are called, you are blessed in both your ups and your downs. You always belong to God. So go now in peace, go trusting that good news. Amen. We cast our cares aside, our fears aside, and trust in Him. And he wants us to use that in our daily life. So today is the day that we step out.